My best friend and I used to sneak out at night and go and do some urban exploration. We wait till everyone is asleep before we leave. We have been almost everywhere in our area, but there's still one house we haven't been to. The neighborhood I live in is pretty quiet and safe, but there's this house that keeps changing residents. We never saw people staying more than a few months at a time. For this reason, people started gossiping about the house being haunted. I never believed this to be true. I always thought there must have been some other reason for people to keep leaving the place. My friend Peter always believed the place had some kind of presence, something dark that would torment the residents and force them to leave before it was too late. Well, this one night, I am at Peter's for a sleepover, and as usual, we want to sneak out at night and do some exploration. But this time, I tried to convince him to go to the haunted house. He tells me no several times, because it's dangerous. I tell him this is not true, that probably people left because they found out the house had other problems, like pipes or fungus or something else. Something real. After much debate, I finally convinced him to come with me. But he made me promise him that at the first sign of something weird happening inside, we would leave immediately. I replied to him, of course. We waited until his parents went to sleep and sneaked out. When we arrived at the house, we went through the back. The back door was locked, but Peter realized the window to the kitchen was slightly open, just enough for us to fit our fingers and push it. We had found our way in and were now inside. It was very dark inside, but the place didn't look like we were expecting. We thought the house would be trashed inside, but it wasn't. It was strangely neat and organized, like if someone had been living there. I told Peter I saw the for rent sign outside. The house was empty. I was sure of it. Peter agreed to continue exploring. I believe he was also curious about this whole situation. We kept walking until we arrived upstairs. Peter was ahead of me and he tried one of the doors. Once he opened it, we could have a large bedroom. And again, despite the darkness, the room looked like someone was living there. Peter said he wasn't feeling well, and that he wanted to leave. At this point I was also feeling scared. Could it be that someone was still living here? I told Peter to go, but at the same time we heard a loud stomp coming from downstairs. We froze, standing in silence, looking at each other. We hear another stomp, this time louder. We hid under the bed, facing the door to see if someone was coming. Could it be that this is just a normal noise of the house? I thought to myself. It wasn't, because the loud stomping continued, getting closer and closer by the second. I was terrified, and so was Peter. We kept watching the door from under the bed, until we could see someone appearing at the door and turning to the room. We froze for a few seconds, looking at this person's boots. He started walking inside the room, in the direction of the bed. This is it, I thought to myself. We were going to get caught. I was preparing myself to start begging and crying for my life, when all of a sudden, Peter gets pulled from under the bed and gets dragged out of the room, screaming. I didn't move to help him, not at first. I was so scared that I was paralyzed. I finally gained some courage and tried to go and help Peter. I ran downstairs. I could still hear Peter's screams. They were coming from the living room. I arrived there, and Peter was being held by a tall man in a raincoat. His hair was long and dark, but his eyes were bright red. He looked at me and said, This house is ours. You will leave now and never come back. Then he released Peter. After uttering those words, the man just vanished. He was gone. Peter and I ran back to his house and swore we were never going to talk about this again. This is the first time I speak about this story since that night. <laughs>